All right, chem nerds. So we are going to look at cellulose as a polymer, and in particular, we're going to focus on it as a condensation polymer. Now, it's a biopolymer, so the catalyst that we'll be looking at, well, we're not going to look at the catalyst, but it would be an enzyme. Now, all these dot points that we're looking at here, they're not quite what we're covering in this video. They're also going to be covered in the video following it, which someone else has made, and it's, it's very wonderful, and it, that will be our... Um, particularly for describe the reaction of it. All right, and so yeah, all right, let's continue. All right, so a biopolymer. What is a biopolymer? Basically, they're polymers that are produced by living organisms. Now, cellulose, starch, proteins, and DNA are good examples of biopolymers. Um, if we move on to glucose, it is the monomer of both cellulose and starch, and they're very important. We'll get to what, they, what cellulose is in a second. These ones, though, they're formed through condensation polymerization. Now, a condensation polymerization, as you'll see in the following video, is a poly polymerization where water is ejected. And that's where the word condensation comes from. Okay, so here's glucose. Now, here's actually two types of glucose, here and here. And we'll see that this is what we call alpha glucose, this is what we call beta glucose. Essentially, they're the same. Like, there's no difference in reactivity. It's just they're drawn different ways. And they do exist in different, but that's not much for us to worry about at all. Um, oh, that sucks. Hang on. All right, we're back. So here we have three different um, polymers of glucose. So we've got starch, and you'll notice that over here, this hydroxyl group off the top is all in a line. With cellulose, what you'll notice is that they alternate. Okay, now that actually, you know, leads to some pretty solid hydrogen bonding, which we'll get to in a second. And then we've got glycogen over here, which has long chains coming off. Now, if we remember anything from our um, polyethylene vod uh, video, we'll notice that this is probably a low density one compared to cellulose. Now, cellulose and starch, cellulose actually has a higher density due to the hydrogen bonding, which we'll see in a second. All right. So this is the repeating unit of cellulose. Um, and yes, the monomer is glucose. That's cool. But because you've got this alternating structure here, that's what gives this, that's what means the repeating unit of cellulose is a two glucose ring. Okay. We can draw it as a chair model, which is what we've done here. Um, maybe give this a quick go of, of drawing up this. Just draw to there. You don't need to draw the whole thing. Um, and what we're looking at is the hydrogen bonding. So you can see the hydrogen bonding here and here and here and here and there and there. That allows it or causes, so that's the dipole dipole between the, yeah, as we see, the difference between the O and the H, whereas the O is massively negative and the hydrogen is massively positive. So, well, comparatively speaking. So what we see here is these fairly strong attractions and cellulose becomes rather dense. Um, and here we are again, so we can see that now, that if we link cellulose there and there together, they're going to be fairly dense, whereas starch won't have quite as much hydrogen bonding. 